And now that we are done with the transport layer, we will start discussing the network layer. Today we will discuss some of the fundamental aspects of the network layer and then we will discuss about the internals of a router. Uh, this network layer deals with host to host communication, which is in contrast with the transport layer which deals with the process to process communication. This involves sending data packets from a source to a destination through multiple nodes of a network by store and forward packet switching. Also, unlike the transport layer and application layer, this network layer exists in all intermediate routers as well, apart from the end host. Remind you that the transport and application layer does not exist in the intermediate router. Uh, remember that every layer provides some services to the layer just above it. The network layer also provides a defined set of services to the transport layer. To get an overview of what network layer does, let us see this figure. A typical network, we see these different nodes connected via uh, many intermediate routers. Uh, these rectangular shapes, these rectangular shapes are end nodes, whereas the circle shapes are intermediate routers. Now, as you can see, there are multiple paths between two given nodes. Say, if I take this node and if I take this node, there are multiple paths. There is this path, there is another path, something like this, uh, there is some other path like this. So, multiple paths exist between two given nodes. Now let us try to understand the most basic tasks of the network layer by using this example network. Let us uh, denote this node as A and let us denote this node as B. And let us assume that uh, some data is to be sent from A to B. Now given that there are many alternative paths between A to B, the network layer first has to decide on an appropriate path for the data packets. Now selection of this uh, appropriate path is a dynamic decision. It is not a very fixed decision. For example, say uh, this uh, network layer has decided that this is a suitable path and data starts flowing through this path. And suddenly traffic increase in this path. And because of data packets from other nodes, there is a huge congestion in this route. Uh, and then the network layer has to decide on an alternate path. It may have also happen that say uh, a particular link went down. So the network had to decide on an alternate path to go from A to B. So uh, over a period of time, it may happen that the base path uh, changes depending on network condition. The task of choosing the most appropriate path between two nodes is known as routing. So this is route. Uh, this routing is one of the most fundamental requirement of uh, the network layer. Now, if you look at one specific router, say this router, you can see that it has got many connections. It is connected to this router, it is connected to this router to now it is connected to this router also, to this router also. Now, say during a data transfer between this node and this node, this particular path is selected. Clear? Now a packet arrives at this link and the router must internally move this packet from this link to this link. In this case, it must move this packet from this link to this link, not to this link or this link. This task of transferring an incoming packet from an input link interface to the appropriate output link interface is known as forwarding. Now, do not make confusion between routing and forwarding. Forwarding is a local task that happens inside a router transferring a packet from one link interface to another. Routing is a network-wide process that determines a complete path between a source and a destination. Let's try to have an analogy to understand this particular concept. Say you want to travel between these two cities. C1 and C2. These are two different cities and there are many alternate paths available between these two cities. So this is one path, this is another path, this is another path, this is another path. Okay. Now, you choose a suitable path depending on your requirements. Say your main requirement is to arrive at the earliest possible time. That means you want to choose a path which takes the least amount of time. And choosing 
such a suitable path is known as routing so say you have chosen this path this particular path you have chosen according to your requirements so choosing of this path is known as routing now you choose this road then you come to this particular roundabout in this roundabout when you arrive at this point you have to come through this roundabout and then exit through at this point okay so you are from this point you are not going to this or this or this or this you are coming to this so this movement this movement in this roundabout is somehow similar to forwarding clear so this is the major difference between routing and forwarding routing is choosing the most appropriate path in the complete network whereas forwarding is something which happened inside the router from one interface to the uh, the appropriate interface on that suitable path so obviously uh, the forwarding will depend on the routing path and now when any node is connected to the network or the internet it is assigned a unique IP address okay every node it's either an IPv4 address or an IPv6 address we'll discuss about this addressing very shortly now when you are connected to the internet most of the times you are assigned an IP address aut uh, automatically by your ISP when you connect to your LAN you are either assigned the IP address automatically or you manually configure the workstation with an assigned IP uh, and this important task assigning of an IP address is another task of this network clear clear so assigning an address to these nodes and all these interfaces a complete understanding of the IP protocol is one of the most utmost importance in the understanding of network communications of the internet the different application layer protocols like HTTP, FTP, SMTP, DNS as well as the true transport layer protocols UDP and TCP rely so heavily on this IP protocol in order to function correctly so you must understand that IP is much more than an address of a machine so we have identified three broad tasks of the network layer routing forwarding and addressing there are other subtasks associated with these tasks which we'll see as we go on discussing these tasks one by one now let us have some discussion about the network layer service model the network layer service model is deceptively simple it provides a best effort service a best effort service a regular definition of a best effort service is that it is a network service that attempts to deliver messages to the intended uh, destinations but it does not provide any special features there is no guarantee that packets will be reliably and orderly delivered or that packets will be delivered within definite time period we had already seen that due to such a model if such services are required, they should be handled by the upper layers. For instance, reliable delivery was handled by TCP in the transport layer. This simplistic best effort service enables that there is less overhead in the implementation of the network layer. Clear? Now, once a packet arrives at the network layer from the transport layer, the network layer adds its own header information to the packet. So the original data that came from the application layer where some header information was already added by the transport layer either by UDP or TCP now has additional information added in this network layer as well. Okay, we'll be discussing the header information uh, which are added in the network layer in a separate lecture. Now the unit that is created in the network layer is popularly known as a datagram. Just like we use the word packet or segment for a unit in the transport layer, we will use the word datagram in this layer. As a datagram is transmitted from the source to destination, it passes through a series of routers. Each of these routers uses these packets, destination address, routing and forwarding actions to transmit the diagram to the next node in the path. Since the intermediate routers are where a lot of actions happens in the network layer, it would be beneficial for us to discuss the internals of a router. To keep things simpler, our discussions of router internals will be block diagram based, not circuit or components based. 
and router has two major functions one is running a routing algorithm to find a suitable route for the packets or datagrams some of the popular routing algorithms are rip ospf and bgp these routing protocols are based on well-known algorithms like digestras or Bellman fold this we will discuss in the routing section the other major functions which we are discussing here is forwarding we have already seen what forwarding is it is the transferring of an arriving datagram from the input port to the appropriate output port to aid forwarding the routers create a, a table which is known as a forwarding table in its most simplest form a forwarding table will contain two types of entries a destination address and an outgoing interface so it says something like this if the destination is this then forward the packet to this interface if the destination address is this forward to this interface and so on obviously the forwarding table will be based on a routing algorithm on the part decided now going back to this figure say if data is to be sent from a to b and this is a and this is b and the routing algorithm decides that this is the base route this particular route which i have shown with the red color is the base route and say for this router let's take this router specifically and say these are the four interfaces we have named them interface one interface two interface three and interface four and say a packet arrives from a uh, it arrives at interface one then according to this part the packet has to be forwarded to interface three so the packet has to come from interface one to interface three this will be clear so in the forwarding table the entry will be what the entry will be that for this destination address b the outgoing interface should be three this will be clear so if i have decided on this part and a packet arrives at interface one the packet has to be transferred internally by this router to the interface number three clear now if the routing algorithm instead decides that this blue colored path is a more suitable path then the outgoing interface will be interface 2 instead of interface 3 this should be clear okay now from a higher level point of view a router has four components input ports switching fabric output ports and a routing processor this is a diagrammatic view also note that a port can be port a input port and a output port in this diagram when a datagram is coming from a into interface one then this interface is an input port when some data packet is going to a through this interface then it becomes an output port clear now let's come back to the uh, router internals and we'll start with input port an input port performs several key functions it performs the physical layer functions of terminating and uh, uh, terminating an incoming physical link at a router this is shown in this leftmost box of the input port an input port also performs the link layer functions needed to interoperate with the link layer at the other side of the incoming link this is represented by this middle box remember a router will contain the network layer as well as its underlying layers at the data link layer and the physical layer also note that the term port is actually referring to the physical hardware interface this is distinctly different from the software ports discussed in the application layer the most crucial function the lookup function from the forwarding table is also performed at the input port this will be performed in the rightmost box of this input port in clear it is here that the forwarding table is consulted to determine the uh, router output port to which an arriving packet will be forwarded this essentially means that the forwarding table has to be uh, stored in the input ports now the forwarding table is computed and updated by the routing processor a shadow copy typically stored at its input port the forwarding table is copied from the routing processor to the line cards over a separate bus for example a pci bus 
Now, what is the requirement of a shuttle copy? With a copy, forwarding decisions can be made locally at its input port without invoking the centralized routing processor for its packet. Forwarding tables are large, so special techniques are required to ensure that uh, lookup does not take a good amount of time. Apart from dedicated hardware, we require fast lookup algorithms. Then, once a packet output port has been determined via the lookup, the packet can be sent to the switching fabric through which it will be transferred to the appropriate outbound interface. A packet may be temporarily blocked from entering the switching fabric if packets from the, uh, other input ports are currently using the fabric. A block packet will be queued at the input port and then scheduled to cross the fabric at a later point in time. So there is a chance that packets queue up in the input port. And if it so happens, then uh, that the rate of the incoming packets, the rate of incoming packets exceeds the rate of packets being transferred, being transferred from this uh, this uh, port, from this point to the fabric, then the, the buffer may fill up, leaving no space, and as a result, uh, packet loss may occur. So a major goal for the input ports is to match the input port processing with the line speed. Clear? Now let us come to the switching fabric. It is through this fabric that the packets are actually switched. Switch means that uh, the packets are forwarded from an input port to an output port. Switching can happen in a number of ways. Switching via memory, switching via bus and switching via an interconnection network like a crossword okay now let's first discuss switching via memory uh, now switching via memory was the original technique which was implemented in the first generation routers but this does not mean that it is an obsolete technique in fact many modern routers switch via memory in this technique switching between input and output ports is done under the direct control of the CPU. The CPU is nothing but the routing processor. Input and output ports function as traditional IO devices in a traditional operating system. Whenever a packet arrives at the input port routing processor, uh, the processor will come to know about it via an interrupt, just it, like it happens in an OS. It then copies the incoming packets from the input buffer to the processor memory. Processor then extracts the destination address Luca from the appropriate forwarding table and copies the packet to the output port's buffer. Modern routers uh, which deploy these techniques use input line cards to make things faster. Note that two packets cannot be forwarded at the same time even if they have different destination ports since only one memory read write can be done at a time using the system bus which is shared. Uh, uh, one uh, example of uh, switching via memory is Cisco's Catalyst 8500 series. This series used this particular technique. The next technique is switching via bus. Unlike the previous technique, the CPU, that is the routing processor, is not involved in transferring the packets. An input port transfers uh, a packet directly to the output port over a shared bus. This is a shared bus. As the bus is shared, only one packet is transferred at a time over the bus. If multiple packets arrive at the router at the same time, it's at a different port. All the other packets must wait until the current packet transfer is done with. Because every packet must cross the single bus, the switching speed of the router is limited to the bus speed. Switching via bus is often sufficient for routers that operate in a small local and enterprise network. Cisco 5600 uses this tactic. Now, switching via an interconnection network uses more sophisticated interconnection network. Example is a crossbar switch. A crossbar switch is an interconnection network consisting of two N buses that connect N input ports to N output ports. Okay, so in this example, three input ports and three output ports they are, inter are interconnected using six buses. Each of these vertical bus intersects with its horizontal bus at a cross point which can be opened or closed at any time by the switch fabric. One obvious advantage of such connections are 
of crossbar networks are that they are capable of forwarding multiple packets in parallel. In this example, when a packet is being transferred from A to Y, another packet can get transferred from B to X. Clear? Now, uh, one example of uh, routers that use uh, this interconnection networks is the Cisco 12000 family. Clear? Now, output ports forwards the packets coming from switching fabric to the corresponding output line. Uh, you can understand that it performs the exact reverse physical and data link functionalities than the input port. Output port also performs queuing of packet which comes from the switching fabric. Remember, a packet takes L by R unit time to be transmitted onto a link where L is the packet size and R is the transmission rate. Now, if there is a mismatch between the transfer rate of packets from the input ports and the transfer of packets on the outgoing link, a queue may build up, uh, resulting in packet loss in the output port. Finally, the routing processor. The routing processor executes the routing protocols, maintain routing tables, and based on the routing tables, computes the forwarding table for the router. Now, all the components should be clear for you. Now, let us come back to the forwarding table. We have seen that the forwarding table contains two important information, destination address and the corresponding outbound interface. Now, understand that uh, there are millions of destination addresses on the internet. For example, in IPv4, where address size is of 32 bits, theoretically there are total 2 to the power 32 possible IP addresses, which is a huge number. 2 to the power 32 IP addresses. It's a big, big number. In IPv6, we can have much more number of addresses. Now, since a destination address in the internet can be any one of these millions of addresses, just imagine what could be the size of a forwarding table. And then the huge task of looking up in this big, big table. Is there a way of reducing the size of a table? Possibly, yes. Let's look through this aspect. Say I have four bit addresses. That means all my addresses are of size four bits. So how many total addresses are possible? Two to the power of four total. 16 addresses are possible. Now say I have a router where I have four interfaces, interface 1, interface 2, interface 3, and interface 4. And this is my forwarding table. If my destination address is this one, 0, 0, 0, 0, that packet has to be uh, transferred to interface 1. If my address is 0, 0, 0, 1, it has to be transferred again to interface 1. If this is the destination address, it has to be forwarded to interface 2, and so on. Okay, so this is the uh, forwarding table. Now, because I have 16 address, I have 16 entries. Clear? Now, think of the real world. Think of, say, IPv4 addresses. What is the size of IPv4 addresses? The size of IPv4 addresses is 32 bits. That means there are total 2 to the power 32 possible addresses in the IPv4 space. So now, if I have a forwarding table in IPv4, I require to have a table of 2 to the power 32 entries. Just like for 4 bit addresses, I have 16 entries. For 32 bit address, I have to have 2 to the power 32 entries in my forwarding table. And this will make a very huge table. Is such a table possible? It it's look almost impossible to have a table like this. So now coming back to this forwarding table, can you think of a way of reducing the size of this table. Yeah. Can I reduce the number of entries in this table? Now there is a possible way of doing it. So instead of having 16 entries, I can actually reduce the number of entries into four entries. Now what would be the solution? So my uh, forwarding table will be something like this. So I have these two entries, destination address and the interface. So I can have something like this. If my address starts with zero, the packet has to be transferred to interface one. If my starting address is zero one, the packets are to be transferred to interface number two. If my destination address starts with one, the packets has to be trans 
transfer to interface 3 and if the in destination address starts with what one this has to be transferred to interface number 4 now using this techniques i have reduced the size of this forwarding table from 16 entries to simple four entries this simple entry single entry actually accommodates this whole range this range of four addresses so if i have any address starts with zero transfer it to interface one so this range of address is accommodated by this entry again this entry 0 1 accommodates this range clear so instead of having one single entry for each destination address i can accommodate for range of address why this is required because there are huge number of address more than 4 billion plus of ip addresses so rather than listing the individual destination address we list the range of addresses clear so this is an example of uh, destination trains and the link interface but this is an example it may happens that the ranges do not divide up nicely okay. now let's go back to this example which we have done previously okay now let's take an example say i have an destination address i have a packet where the destination address is 0101 now if you look at this address and if I look at the forwarding table, this address actually satisfies two entries in the table. It satisfies this one also because the first and because the first this is zero and it also satisfies this entry zero one because I have this entry matching this entry. So which one it will take? Clear? You got the problem because this destination address satisfies this entry also it satisfies this entry also but it has to decide only one so when i have this sort of problem this is solved using a technique known as longest prefix matching this technique says that when looking for the forwarding table entry for a given destination address use the longest address prefix that matches the destination address note the word longest address prefix so going back to this example what which one is the longest prefix obviously this one zero one it matches both it matches both the case for zero and it matches for zero one also but this is of longer big this is longer okay this is of two bits this is one single bit so because this is the longer prefix that's why this address would match to this entry according to the a technique known as longest prefix matching so the internet when creating forwarding tables it actually uses this technique known as longest prefix matching okay. so again this is another example given this table and given these two examples you should be able to tell which interface would this destination address matches to so if i have this destination address if i look at it the first one should be clear this is 0010000010. So the first one is clear. This is for link interface 0. But the second example, this second example would match both of them. So 0, 0, 0, 3, 0, then 1, 1, 1, 1, then 0, 0, 0. So this one matches this entry also. This one matches this entry also. But going by this technique of longest prefix matching, it should obviously match this entry, this particular entry of interface one, because this is the longest prefix. Okay, so I guess uh, these should be clear for. You. Now these are some of the problems from your textbook, which you should attempt. Now a particular forwarding table is given, and uh, you were also given that the addresses are of eight bits. Okay, the addresses are eight bits. Uh, so this router uses this longest prefix matching technique and given this forwarding table you should uh, give for each of these interfaces what are the associated ranges of destination host address associated ranges means you have, because the size is of 8 bits you have to tell that from this address to this address the interface is zero from this address to this address the interface should uh, is this and so on 
uh, I'll give you a partial solution for this. Uh, the full solution is that M. Now this would be easy. So uh, what uh, address range would be for interface 0? Obviously, it will start from all the addresses that starts from 0, 0. That means 0, 0 because it is of 8 bits. So I have to use all 8 zeros. Okay. Like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 zeros. And then up to what? Up to the address before this because from this from 0 1 0 interface starts from 0 1 0 0 1 0 and all other zeros to take eight digits from here interface one starts so from the starting to the address just before this this range would be for interface zero again starting from this up to the address that ends before this this would be interface one so this is a partial solution to this so starting from eight zeros to zero zero one 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 this is interface zero so exactly after this address this address starts zero one zero and eight uh, total eight uh, digits so from here to the number before this to the address before this this is for laying interface one okay so going uh, in the same manner you should find the address range for uh, you should find the link interface the address range for each of this link interface okay uh, this is under problem from your textbooks you solve it in the same manner again it is an 8 bit address space you are given a forwarding table and using the longest prefix matching technique you should give the associated range of addresses for each of these four interfaces. Uh, this is a problem. You have to do the opposite one here. You are given a range of addresses and a link interface and you have to uh, provide a forwarding table uh, using the longest prefix matching technique. Okay, that means you have to create a, a reduced forwarding table using the longest prefix matching technique. Clear? Uh, again, I will give you a partial solution. The full solution you should attempt yourself. So this is of 32-bit addresses. So if I use a partial solution, it should be something like this. So the prefix match for 0 is 1, 1, 1, then up to this, two zeros. If you look at it, two, why two zeros? Because from here up to this, okay up to this this is uh, link interface 0 from here interface 1 starts so this is the prefix of interface 1 so accordingly you calculate for these uh, other interfaces as well so this completes our first lecture of network layer uh, today we'll had a very generic discussion about the uh, services of the network layer, the three major functions of the network layer, routing, forwarding, and addressing. Then we discussed about uh, the internals of a router, what are the uh, different parts of a uh, router, how do they interact with each other, what are the main tasks inside a router. Then we discussed about forwarding table and the technical longest prefix matching. Clear? We'll be discussing more topics of the network layer in the subsequent lectures. Thank you.